and we do need to keep praying for Aaron. He didn't ask for prayer for himself, I noticed, but um, we need to pray for him and the whole Crimini family that they will heal, especially when they see other incidents in the headlines. It's like, will this ever change, you know? And so that, that wound is still there and we need to keep him in prayer. So I know you guys do that. Thank you. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. I think anybody that's a parent or a grandparent, you know, you think, you know, your kids are just out having fun at the skate park. I see them all the time back home. And, you know, my son went through a time too where he got into some trouble and it didn't end the way it did for Carson. And, you know, I think for all of us, we need to be as a community rallying around. And, you know, if you're going through loss or grief, maybe somebody you know has died in a tragic way, uh, always know that we have our prayer lines available. That's something that we really believe in. And I just, this was just so proud of Maggie, the way that she brought that to Aaron. And we're going to pray for Aaron, but we also want to pray for you. Give us a call, 1-866-273-4444. And again, if it's a sensitive nature, you're not sure you want to talk to somebody, you can also email us at prayer at crossroads.ca. And I think, too, as we look at this issue of bullying, if you see something, say something. Whether you're an adult or a kid, when you see something going on, call the police, go to the teacher. That's We have to start taking responsibility as a society about it. You know, I, I saw this article, Carson Kremeny's grandfather, Daryl, saw what happened here with Devin Salvi last week in Hamilton, who was, of course, stabbed to death uh, in a bullying incident right in front of his own mother broke all of our hearts. And you know, when he sees that happening, he's, it's another child, the same kind of thing. And you know, he says something has to be done. And he's, he was really reflecting on the lack of empathy in our culture where we would just film something like that and then not do anything about it. So it, it continues on. And even with here with Devin Salvi, people were saying this has to be a watershed moment. Like this, something needs to change. His death, these deaths have to mean something. And the only way they mean something is if we as a culture start saying it's not okay and we, we, we all need to take responsibility when we see something like this happen. And you know, also think of those boys that were involved with Carson as well. I mean, obviously they're going to be going through some, you know, some grief process perhaps as they realize, you know, what has happened. It's a difficult situation and justice, of course, needs to be served in this situation. But, you know, we hear of those extreme cases, but bullying is going on all over the place and Charlotte is getting worse because of social media. Now, recently I spoke to my own daughter, Amelia, back in Edmonton about what she had experienced in bullying. And uh, here's just a little part of that interview that I did with my daughter, Amelia. I remember my very first class sitting down and a boy teasing me for the way my body was. And I was very small, underdeveloped, and that was something that I was targeted for. So I would go to school every day and I would feel like an incomplete person. And I would look at other girls and I'd be envious of them and wanting to look like them because I was made to feel like I was defective. So years of that just affected my self-esteem in such a negative way. And I didn't view it as bullying at the time, but looking back, that's exactly what was happening and I felt like a target. Girls aren't exactly the friendliest at that age. So one day I came to school and the friends that I had just weren't my friends anymore. So I'd spend lunch times alone and trying to feel, or trying to find people to sit with, to just spend time with. And I just never felt like I had connection with people. And I was very lonely. Of course, what Amelia went through didn't end uh, nearly as seriously as what happened with these two boys. I myself was bullied in school as well, didn't have that kind of ending, but it's always been around, seems to be getting worse from social media. You actually have a good update though from Amelia, a piece of good news today, which I think we all need right now. Yeah, we certainly do because I mean, bullying has become such a difficult topic in our country and it's, it's horrible. But to, as Amelia, you know, the interview went out on social media that I did with her, one of the boys that was a bully of her, you know, bullied Amelia in school, in high school, school actually got a hold of her through Facebook on Messenger and apologized and said he just you know he'd been feeling guilty about it and when he saw the interview he just realized what he'd done and I think that's the thing about bullying is the people that are doing this don't realize the damage that they're doing to other people. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure those kids that were given Aaron drugs didn't all, totally think through the no. fact, because kids can't always think ahead, that they were actually killing him. At least like, you hope that because you try to believe the best about everybody. You do, and uh, and again, we, when we think about these families, you know, uh, you know, for Carson and Devin's family, let's just continue to be praying for them. They really need the prayer support. 